Hello, friends. It is time for reading. And we're reading today. We're reading in our text today. And something funny happened. Um, you know how we keep all of our books and all of our things organized in our physical classroom. And um, when you have a computer, and you know this, that you have pulled them put things in different places, different folders. Some things are on your desktop. Some things are in a folder that you can't see. It's just like organizing your room. And so this morning I went to find my reading book and I was like, oh, where is it? I'm looking all over my computer computer because my icon was gone. I had accidentally put it in another place. So I thought that that was kind of like losing your book and finding it in the living room or something like that. So I did find it. We do have it today. And um, Jeff, I know you always keep track of this for me. We are going to be reading pages 84 to 91 today. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. I'm going to share my screen. Yes, the farmer and the donkey. There it is. We're on act two. This page is page 84, but you won't need to worry about it because I've got the text here for you. We're reading to page 91 today. I'll have Jeff help me keep track of that. All right, we're on act two. And let's start, well, let's start with having Jeff read for us. Okay, and remember we talked about yesterday, last time, may have been yesterday, that when you read a play or um, something that is meant to be performed, you have, it's, it's, the paragraphs are listed by the character and the character that should be saying that particular piece. So here we've got our narrator saying this much, and then the tailor's wife came, comes in and says this much, and then the farmer comes in and says this much, and the tailor talking again. So what you have is dialogue. Dialogue is where you have two or more people talking, actually talking, and that's what we've got going on. Now, another thing I wanted to point out, that plays are or scripts for plays are separated into acts. Like one act talks about one part, the next act talks about the next part. And sometimes, but not always, the act changes the scene, changes the background where the part of that play takes place. For example, the first part of our play took place on the road. And now act two, we can see that actually, if I'm looking at it, it does happen on the road too, but sometimes the second act may happen at home or at another part. Just like a story is broken down into paragraphs and chapters, a play is broken down into acts and scenes, all right? So now we're on act two. This is the second part, almost, you could almost call it the second chapter of our story today. So here we go, and we're having Jeff read. He is starting with the narrator, and the narrator says, An hour later, the farmer and his son, I don't want to go with the light color here. I don't want to run the risk of scribbling on that book. I'll do light blue. Okay. An hour later, the farmer and his son reached the town. They trotted by the tailor's house. The tailor and his wife were sitting on their front porch. And let's have, who's next? Who's behind Jeff? Austin is. Austin, will you read this part for me? The tailor's wife. She says, tut, tut, look at that. The farmer, rides along while his little boy has to run as best he can to keep up. For shame. You agree with the tailor's wife? So should they both be riding? Or the baker who said the farmer should be riding? Or 
I forget who the other one that says that the father should be writing. Who do you think should be writing? And the farmer said, well, well, what can I do? And the tailor says, oh, why, you're fine, donkey. donkey. Could surely carry both of you. Jamia on this next part. The farmer says, oh, what good advice. I should have thought of it myself. Thank you, kind tailor. Son, KJ. Should I climb up behind you, father? And this one's for Ryland. That's what the farmer says. Yes, come along. With both of us riding, we will reach the marketplace in no time at all. Hmm. How do you think this is going to make the donkey feel? All of a sudden, the donkey's got more weight. I wouldn't want to be the donkey in this instance. Let's take a look at the next page and see what happens. All right, we have some clues looking at our page. How does the farmer look? Does he look happy? Pretty happy. How about the boy? Does he look happy? I think so too. Let's take a look at Glum. Oh boy, how does he look? He looks glum or unhappy. The word glum means unhappy. Why is he unhappy? Why would he be unhappy, Kylie? That's right, because he has to carry the weight of both of these people. And if you look, the farmer looks big on top of him. So let's read the text. Okay, and I think it is, whose turn is it to read? KJ, Rylan, let's have, um, let's have Kylie read this one. Kylie read the part of the narrator. The farmer and his son again set off bouncing up and down and back and forth as Glum wobbled down the cobblestone street. Before long, the miller met them. He had a sack of wheat slung over his arm. Let's talk about some of these, some of these words. Miller, we talked about the miller last time. He was the person who takes the wheat and makes it into flour, all right? And, but I want to touch on this word right here, cobblestone. Cobblestone is a type of streets. We don't see them a lot very much in Jacksonville, although I, there are some. Um, I have seen them around in Jacksonville, but there aren't very many. Take a look at the road. See how the road is made up of stones or big rocks here? That's cobblestone, that's a cobblestone street. And it's uneven on your feet, it's kind of hard to walk on. So that may be how it, you know, it's a little bit hard on the donkey too. And now we're on page 86 and let's have Brianna read the Miller's part. It said, the Miller says, what's this? Such a sad donkey. I would never wish to carry such a heavy load as he has been carrying. He looks like he might fall over and die. His long brown ears are drooping so low, they almost reach the ground. I'm gonna get pressed in this next one, the farmer's part. The farmer says, well, I guess we are a heavy load for Glum. Hunter? The miller says, indeed, you and your son should be carrying him. Whoa, what do you think about that? You think the, you, the farmer and the son should be carrying the donkey? That's, that's pretty crazy. Would you carry a donkey? Could you carry a donkey? I don't know. Let's find out. We're back to Jeff. The farmer says, we will, son, find a long pole. We can tie Glum to it with his rope and carry him between us. And the son says, yes, sir. 
Here's a poll by the street. All right, Austin, you've got the Miller's part. Your donkey's long brown ears have perked up already, says the Miller. Jamia, the farmer says, good. We are taking him to the marketplace to sell him. No one will pay for him if he's worn out from carrying us. Thank you for the good advice. And KJ will give you this last piece. The miller says, you're welcome. Take care of your donkey. Hmm. Let's look at the picture. The picture on this one. All right. Now let's look at the, the looks on their faces. How does the farmer look like he feels? Happy? Look at the way his body's standing. Does he look like maybe this donkey is a little heavy? Do you see how the stick is kind of bending a little bit, kind of bowing a little bit? That usually indicates that the weight in the middle is heavy. You think a donkey would be pretty heavy? I think so. And let's look at the boy. How does the boy look? Well, we don't see much of an expression on his face. He's kind of concentrating and, and focusing on his work. But look at his body. Does it look like it's easy for him to carry it? Is he carrying it in one hand? No, it might be heavy. You might be seeing heavy over here on him too. Now, let's look at the donkey's face. How does Glum look? Look at his face. I think he looks completely surprised. He's thinking, this is weird, right? That's what I think he thinks. Is there any text up here? Nope, it's down at the bottom. There it is. And this is what the narrator says. At last, the two set off again with Glum's feet tied to the pole. The farmer carried one end of the pole and his son carried the other end. Slowly, they shuffled along the cobblestone streets until they reached the marketplace. Look, I missed a page. Yep, there we are. I missed two pages. Missed a lot of pages. Okay, here we go. So they get to the town and let's look at the faces of the townsfolk, the people in the town. Let's see if we can figure out how they're feeling. Now, what's she doing with her hand? She's smiling and pointing. Here's the lady who's got her hand over her mouth. It's kind of maybe surprising. Oh, wow, look at that. Here looks like some people who may be a little bit laughing. They think it's kind of silly to see this. Hmm. Let's read on and find out. The townsfolk say, look, look, what's this? To the kind of, what, are, what are we seeing? The storekeeper says, a man and a boy are carrying a donkey. And we've got that exclamation point right there. That means we really mean it. And it's kind of, we want to put some emphasis on that boy, on that, those words. A donkey. The townsfolk say, what a strange sight. And the storekeeper says, I can't believe anyone would do something so foolish. And then the townsfolk, oh, ho, 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 ha, 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 ha. How foolish, how silly. What are they doing now? Maybe making fun of the, the farmer and the, don and the boy? for just taking the advice. Okay.
And Gawam says, hee-haw, hee-haw. And the farmer says, hush, hush, you're frightening my donkey. Who's he saying that to? Maybe the townspeople? Gawam says, hee-haw, now you look right here. He's got this, still got the exclamation mark, but he's changed from lowercase letters to uppercase letters. What does that mean? Glum goes from hee-haw to hee-haw, hee-haw. Those uppercase letters and the exclamation mark means that there's a little bit of, of a change in the way they're speaking, okay? He's, the, the donkey is making noise right now, but now he's really making noise. When an animal says, when an animal makes a noise that's kind of soft or just a normal noise, like a meow, meow. But then the next one is meow, meow. What does that indicate to you, even though you don't know cat language? That indicates that maybe they're in a little bit of trouble. Maybe they've gotten locked behind a door or gotten stuck and they can't get out of something. So we can tell here, just by the words, just by the way these words are written, that this donkey's not happy. He went from being kind of surprised to really upset. He's not happy with what's going on here. The next part says, for the narrator, says, at that, Glum pulled and kicked till his rope broke and the pole snapped in two. He rolled over and began to run. What would you do if you were tied to a pole? I'd kick and run too. Glum. Hee-haw, hee-haw. Farmer. Quick, catch him. The sun, and right here, in this parentheses right here, these are called parentheses where you're taking a word and you're putting it in between two marks like this. In this instance, this gives you an idea of what the sun is doing because this word is panting. <sighs> when do you pant? When you're out of breath, when you've been running. So the sun is panting. So now we can tell, even though we can't, we aren't with him, we can tell that he's been running and he's tired. And the son says, stop him, he's running away. I see lots of exclamation marks here. You wouldn't say, stop him, he's running away, would you? If your donkey was running away, you'd go, stop him, he's running away. And the town folks say, there he goes, look how fast he can run. This over here because I moved my eyes over there. Okay, now we're on page 90. And the narrator says, the farmer and his son left town and headed home. Did they get to sell the donkey? I don't think so, did they? Because the donkey ran away. Why? Because they made a mistake about carrying him and and making him upset and excited. The farmer says, ah, alas, my donkey is gone. All I can see are his long brown ears. I foolishly took bad advice. The son says, now we cannot ride, carry, or even sell glum. And the father says, I have learned my lesson too late. In trying to please everyone, I have pleased no one. Okay, so if you think back in this story, lots of people told the farmer what to do. First of all, the baker told the farmer what to do and, and the farmer did it and that made the baker happy, didn't it? Did it make the son happy because the son, or did it make the father happy because the father had to walk? No, but it made the son happy. And then next, when the farmer was told that he should ride and the boy should walk, 
Did that make the boy happy? No. Did it make the farmer happy? Sure. But then he was told that they should both ride. Well, who did that make happy? Maybe the farmer and his son and the person who told them, but did it make the, the donkey happy? No. Okay. So what the farmer has learned from this lesson is that so many people try to tell you the right thing to do and, and the thing that they want you to do. And if you do it, you make them happy, but you may not make yourself happy or you may not make other people happy. So, so the farmer learned his lesson. He needed to stop and think about the advice that he was getting and whether it was good advice or not, right? Very good. Good story. I like that story. And on page 91. I'll show you down in here. Because in 91, this is what we're going to do for our activity tomorrow. Okay? So we'll close this up today. We'll do right here to 22. And tomorrow we'll do. Oops. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing now and I'll see you soon for spelling. Bye bye.